Alright, this is a video um, over basically we're looking at regression analysis, um, determining our p-values, determining whether to accept or reject our null hypothesis, finding the equation of a regression line, and then determining you know, um, if we can use any specific data points from there. But basically regression, what does a regression do for us? This is a video that's going to help us with our graphing calculator, um, how to do these problems. So remember, null hypothesis, uh, always equal to zero. Alternative, always not equal to zero. All right? Our scatter plot. Well, you know, we could just take these order pairs right here and just come down and, and look at the graphs and find the one that we want. But I'd like to show you on the calculator how to do this if you haven't already learned. So let's go ahead and put our data into our calculator. So um, we go stat. We enter edit number one. Okay. Oh, I forgot to show you that you can, you know, that one way of clearing the list is just to arrow up on top of the list name itself. And don't press delete, press clear. And then enter. And that will actually clear your list out. The other way is, is that when you go into the stat button, so when you're in the stat button, you'll notice number four says clear list. So you hit number four. But you have to tell it which list to, to clear. So one way of doing that is you say second. And right here, you'll notice in blue, it says L1. And I'm going to go ahead and just for the sake of doing it, I'm going to type in L2 also, even though it's already clear. So you can see it says second and the two button, and that gets me L2. Press Enter. So now when you go back to your list by hitting Stat, and you go into Edit, you'll see that both lists are cleared. Okay, so take a moment here, please, and put your data into your list, 526, 504. I'm going to hit pause, and I'll come back when I'm done. All right, so I have my data values in. Double check that they're lined up. Everything works. Before we actually do our scatter plot, what I like to do is I like to double check by pressing Y equals that there aren't any other type of graphs graphed. So we hit Y equals. And notice there are nothing's in my Y equals. If there was something, like let's just say that there was 89X right there. I'd want to press clear to get rid of that because I don't want to do a scatter plot in a line at the same time. Okay, so scatter plots are located underneath the stat plot right here. So you're going to hit second stat plot. And we go in. Okay. So when we do the scatter plot here, um, the key thing is, is that we want our plot turned on. We want this guy on, on scatter plot right here, the first option. So remember, you can go side to side, moves you between choices. To select something, you press Enter. To change it, you go on top of what you want, and you press Enter. To move between the options, you, auto, you move up and down. So once you have your window set up like so, we're ready to go on and change our actual window for our graph. Now you'll notice our window for our graph is 400 to 700. 400 to 700 and they're going by 20s so we need to change our window so you'll notice a button right here called window we need to change our window if this occurs to you and it's no big deal don't panic you just hit second quit okay and that turns off there's you notice right here there's these f1 keys there's f1 f2 f3 f4 so i'll go back in here real quick and you'll notice what happened was is that i had the f1 this, the green button was pushed, it was on alpha. So when I did that, that popped up. So just hit second quit. That turns that alpha off and go back into your window. Set your window up to match the window that you see here in your scatter plots. X minimum 400, X maximum 700, scale 20. Okay, take a moment to do that. Once you're ready, go ahead and hit play. So when I hit graph, what I get is I get a scatter plot that looks like so. So as I kind of scan through here, I'm thinking, ah, oh, could be A, definitely not B, definitely not C, because this guy right here is kind of off by himself, and definitely not D, because once again, there's somebody off. So I think our best answer is going to be A. So I roll this guy down, and I choose A. Let me get this down so we can see a little better. Okay, bingo, they let us move on. So now we're ready to do our regression analysis. So we're going to use our t-test analysis to be able to find our correlation coefficient. We have a test of significance at 0 0.01 or 100th. So if you remember now, to do our significance testing, we go to stat. 
We arrow over to calc. Okay, so one more time, stat. Go over to not calc, excuse me, to test. On the 84, we're going to go down to letter F. On the 83, I believe it's E. But we're looking for the linear regression T test. Okay, so we press enter to choose that. By default, it tells us L1, L2, frequency of 1. Uh, we want to put our regression equation into Y1, and I'll show you why here shortly, but we want to make sure that's all set up that way. We arrow our way down to calculate. And let me just show you, if by chance on your regression equation it doesn't say Y1 or doesn't have anything there, the way you get that to Y1 is you go to VARS, you go over to Y VARS, and you go into function number one. And there's Y1 right there, so you can just press enter and that'll put Y1 in that location. Once you have that window set up like so, please go to calculate and press enter. This gives us all of our information that we're going to need for the rest of this question. Um, so there we go. We got a correlation coefficient of 0.643. They wanted us to round our decimal to our answer to three decimal places. So we check. Okay. They want us to find our p-value. Our p-value is right up here. So they want our p-value to three decimal places. So 0.242. So in this case right here, we have to remind ourselves. Do we reject or do we accept the null hypothesis? So, um, where am I looking for? Here we go. Okay, if my p value is less, then I reject. If my p value is greater, then I accept. I do not reject. So, in this case right here, my p value is greater than that, so my null hypothesis is not. Is that right? Is not. Let's look up one more time. Do not. Yep. Okay. So at this point right now, this leaves a step off for us because now this changes the question. So now we have a scenario where our null hypothesis is not rejected. So therefore, we're ready to move on. And since we're ready to move on at this point, then we basically can say that there is not significant evidence to conclude a linear relationship between these two situations. So when we check that out, we find out that, you know, and why is that? Well, let's just real quickly take a look at that. If this is our graph right here, and, and, and I have an equation here, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you. If I hit graph right now, what happens is I get this, this regression line that goes across. But look at the spread. Look at how far apart these data points are from this regression line. A regression line is used to pre make predictions about data. So I collect a small amount of data, I create a regression line. That regression line allows me to make predictions. The stronger my correlation coefficient, the better my predictions will be, the more value that they will have. Well, the problem is here is that my correlation coefficient isn't strong enough. I don't have a strong enough relationship in my data to be able to make predictions that will have value. So that's why I would reject, and in this case here, we move on. Now you'll notice here my correlation coefficient being 0.6. Remember, good correlation coefficients are positive 1 and negative 1. Those are perfect. So we're a little bit away from that. You know, when you have 0 0.8, 0 0.9, then we're a little bit happier. All right, so that's what happens when you don't. In this case here, let's see this is when we when the null hypothesis is not rejected okay so when we don't reject the null hypothesis this is what happens